Hey, everyone out there, support Keith Andrews. His podcast is one of the best, and I say support him because he is one of the best. Gentlemen, welcome to the Keith Andrews Network. This is 554. I'm here with Roy and Kinaru. I just want to say thank you for being a guest on my talk show. Oh, thank you very much for having us. No, the honor's all mine. For people who want to know what my talk show is about, the whole point of my talk show is to show people that even with having a word of disability, I can still amount to something. And at the absolutely. same time, no, absolutely. <laughs> at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of word and disabilities and disabilities to never give up and prove people wrong. Prove to them that labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be. It's proved to them you, still bring, you can still amount to something. If when I don't do my interviews as of late, my disability shows more, so it's kind of like I'm trying to, to hide it. But a lot of people are like, oh, you have a disability, you should show it. But for me, it's more professional if I hide it. But anyway, you know, just I've been working a lot, and this is only the second time I've been doing my interview. So I'm trying to get back into the rhythm. Well, okay. that being said, a half hour, 33 minutes every time. Freedom of speech, self-expression. You can say anything you want, talk about anything you want. And starting off, I saw that you are a former WWF Hall of Famer. That's why I say it's an honor to have a Hall of Famer like yourself on the show. And also, you're from a big Hawaiian family. But that's another subject I want to talk to you about. <laughs> you're from a big Hawaiian family. And your cousins who have Dwayne Johnson. Yeah, well, actually, uh, my dad is a Hall of Famer. I, I worked with WWF and WWE, and uh, not a Hall of Famer yet, but uh, my family members are. And we come from a big family from Samoa, uh, not Hawaii. Uh, Samoa is a different island. It's about 2,700 miles south of Hawaii. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a smaller island in Hawaii, but... You know, it's a beautiful island, that it, you know, just like we are. No, absolutely. And what can you tell us about your time in the WWF or WWE? Well, back then it was WWF. Uh, I enjoyed myself. I had good times, uh, you know, uh, being on the road and uh, wrestling with the company. And then, uh, you know, I went back in 1997 and re-signed a contract and was there for a little while, you know. But uh, things happened to where they... We didn't do the three years completely, but, you know, I, I, I don't take anything back. I had a good time, and, uh, you know, I went on to working with ECW with uh, Paul Heyman when he owned it. And I actually wrestled for ECW before Paul Heyman took over. So, uh, you know, I, I've been blessed. I've been around the world uh, maybe about three times, going on three times. I've been all over the place, so I'm truly blessed. Have you ever won any championships, or have you wanted to win any championships? Uh, well, let's see. I've won, <laughs> when I wrestled in Puerto Rico, I won the tag team belts 14 times over there. I've, I've held uh, heavyweight titles. I have a heavyweight title. Oh, actually, I have in the Middle East, also in Europe, in Germany, and uh, quite a bit of tag team titles for different uh, promotions. Now, what is your opinion about, I don't know if it's true or not, but it's on a dirt sheet right now. That supposedly WWE canceled their pay per view over in Saudi Saudi Arabia. What is your uh, opinion on that whole situation? Well, I was just at the show they had uh, in my hometown, and uh, they didn't say anything about you know uh, being you know uh, canceled. Uh, everybody's still going. Uh, everybody's talking about it. So. I don't know if that's true or not. If it is, it just recently happened because, like I said, I was just there Sunday and I seen my cousin, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Roman Reigns and uh, a lot of the other guys in uh, uh, Nia Jax. So, uh, you know, uh, didn't hear anything. Everybody's excited because after uh, SmackDown, which is tonight, uh, uh, 1000, uh, I think they're all going out and they're heading out there. So unless it's something like right now, I, I don't think it's I think it's gonna still happen. I got a stupid question for you, but I was just thinking about you know, if I may. 
What's your permission? Well, hey, I might have a stupid answer for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know how, oh, and no disrespect by this, you know how all Samoans say you know, their family? How did all that, get, isn't that like stereotyping or how did all that, you know, come about? It's like saying, you know, all white people are family. Well, here, I'll, I'll answer that quick for you. All right. There's not too many Samoan wrestlers that are in the wrestling business. And if they are, the majority of them are all of our family. Right. There's about 16 of us that are in the wrestling company uh, industry right now. Uh, some that are not on WWE, majority of them are. And, um, you know, one of them that's wrestling right now is uh, Samoa Joe. And, yes, he is not related to us, but I'm sure somewhere down the line in the blood history, he has something to do with our family. Because back in Samoa, everybody's related to everybody, you know, because Samoa's not a big island. And, you know, there's so many, you know, uh, families there. So somewhere down the line, we're probably blood related somewhere. And I know disrespect by that. I was just always wondering... You know, why did people kept referring to that? So I just wanted to get my answer question because I always ask, and I'm the one that used to look at me, he's like, what, are you stupid or something? No, that's fine because that's why they call us the Simone Dynasty because we are the true Simone Dynasty of, or Dynasty of Wrestling. Uh, we're one of the biggest families in professional wrestling besides the hearts. Uh, you know, we actually took over and... Uh, you know, have more than hearts, but, uh, you know, the hearts are, are wonderful people, man. And, uh, you know, I had a pleasure and the honor to uh, grow up with them, especially Owen. Uh, you know, we're around almost close to the same age. So, uh, you know, we had a good time. My dad was up there in Calgary, uh, you know, with Stu Hart and everything. So, you know, they're they're great people. Well, while on the subject, let's have some fun with this. And you can throw it back at me and you guys can ask me anything. With you were in the World Wrestling Federation back in the good year, what I call the good years, you know, before the whole crappy attitude there. <laughs> Even for me, wrestling was the golden age, you know. You had Hogan, Sabbath, Flair, Sting. You had in Monday Night, I like your opinion on the whole Monday Night Wars that happened. And the golden age with, you know, Brett, Sean, Nas Hall. And Dennis stopped because I don't acknowledge the attitude error. But Dennis started to pick up with the roof as a grassing error. That's hands down one of my favorites. But yeah. during your time in the next generation, have you ever had a match that said just by don't buy don't mind me when I'm nervous and my disability so is Mark. That's okay. When you were in the next generation was there ever a match you had said, hands down, this is the best match I ever had? And was there ever a time you said, man, this match sucked, but it could have been a lot better? Well, I mean, I, I was privileged and honored to be wrestling when it was the older era, you know, with uh, when Bret Hart was there, you know, uh, Hulk Hogan, um, you know, all the other guys, Macho Man, Randy Savage, got rest his soul, you know, so all those guys. And right now, you know, I did uh, wrestle some guys that actually left WWE and went on the independent uh, circuit. And it's a big difference. Yeah, it's a little bit of a difference because it's more, they're more uh, sports entertainment as uh, Vince McMahon had, has, has, you know, has a TV right now. And uh, back then, in the, the older era, it was it was rough and tough. You know, it was it was a lot better. But I think they're trying to actually go back to a little bit of the old school right now. You can see it a little bit. You know, they're bringing like what, for example, uh, uh, they're bringing back uh, uh, Shawn Michaels. And tonight, actually, they're gonna have uh, Dave Batista back and and have D Generation X and uh, you know Ric Flair. So I think they're trying to go back a little bit, you know, just to give the taste to the people and try to get those those other crowds that they had years ago to come back up. No, I agree. And there, a lot of people say, and I want your opinion on this too, and your sons, because I like to know what you think of wrestling up today compared to then. You know, people say, oh, it's PG. That's what's killing it. Or they don't have blood anymore. You know, I like blood. You have a great match, you know, you get heated. It adds to it. But you do, you want to add blood? But, you know, it's give or take. But that's besides the point. The point is, they said PG kills it. You look at WWF Roar, you look at WCW Monday Nitro. 
and there was absolutely nothing wrong with it. They went head to head, you know, every Monday, the ratings were good, the fans got into it. What I feel hurt the wrestling business, but a lot of people would disagree, said they enhanced the wrestling business, was like ECW or um, the Attitude Era. And that's when it opened the door for other, you know, bizarre and outrageous skits that they were doing. But do you think that after all the different things they were doing over the years, that they were going, okay, let's hit the reset button and go back to 1994, 1996. I think it's good that he can go back, bring back the old introduction, the old ring, the old announce that, bring back everything. Or hell, you know, make, you know, roar, roar, and make SmackDown Nitro. Just do something different to get people say, oh, this gives me that old school nostalgia feel into it. Instead of saying, why are they trying to do something from 20 years ago that sucked then, and apparently it sucks now, in the, uh, 2018? What is your opinion about the current product? Well, the current product is okay. I mean, you got a lot of talented wrestlers out there, but, you know, it's like they're on a leash. They have to do what they're told. And uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of them would like to, you know, go back to old school. But like I said, you know, it is sports entertainment. That's the way Vince McMahon puts it. And, uh, you, you know, you got to give him hands down. I mean, people may hate him, but he's one of the smartest businessmen around. And, uh, you know, basically he knows what he's doing. He's getting a lot older, but uh, they, they branched out a lot. They have Raw. They have uh, SmackDown. They got NXT. They have UK NXT. They have so many branches out there now. It's so much going on. They have so much talent on their, you know, roster. Uh, you know, it's it's incredible. So it, it, it's, it's branched out quite a bit. And that thanks to, you know, sports entertainment for TV, what they have, which is, more than they used to have years ago because years ago was only on one channel. Now you have WWE on so many channels. You got it, you know, on different channels, and uh, people have the opportunity to watch it all over the world now. So uh, you know, I, I I like the new era, but psychology wise and wrestling wise, uh, I would bring old school back anytime. No, absolutely. Personally, you know, there's like Impact Wrestling, and I would rather watch old episodes of Monday Nitro compared to TNA. TNA was great, you know, and they had this chance, I don't know if you remember, it was about January 4th, 2010, where they went to Monday and everyone, everyone got excited. Said, Thank God there's competition to go with WWE. And yeah. the first segment of the show went down to Crapper, then the second one. So TNA really dropped the ball on that. But yeah, there was yeah. a time where TNA was great. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. You know, everybody had their era. You know, TNA was hot at one time. Uh, you know, uh, WCW was hot at one time. But, you know, Vince, he, he took the whole monopoly. He bought everybody, ECW and everything, and he made it a one-man band show, and, and that's what he's doing now. You know, the Vince McMahon, and I would say this to his face, and I would love to have him on the show, his biggest mistake was buying WCW, but at the same point, it was good that he bought WCW because he created, uh, he didn't create, Jeff Jarrett created TNA Wrestling. Yeah. So it's one of those what ifs. What if WCW never went out of business? How would that affect the wrestling business? What if there was never TNA? But, you know, this is not all about wrestling. I want to ask you, you know, our good friend, Mr. Ed, you know, came to you guys. You guys are working on a current project, but I would like to hear from you guys. You now, what can you tell us about your current project and what kind of word of wisdom did he tell you guys about me? Hopefully he told you some great things about me, not to pat myself on the back. <laughs> but, well, but, uh, Big Ed McKeever, you know, he got to me and uh, uh, Jason, uh, uh, his buddy, uh, you know, that they work together, producers, uh, they called me up and uh, they asked me if I would like to be a part of one of their projects that are coming up called Matt Rats. And uh, he's, he's always wanted to use me because I've done other uh, uh, movies. I was in The Wrestler with Mickey Rourke. 
I did a lot of stuff back uh, years ago with uh, Law and Order. I also did uh, some uh, segments on MTV, Silent Library, and I uh, currently was going to do something with Glass, uh, which was with uh, you know uh, Samuel L. Jackson and uh, uh, Bruce Willis. Uh, I was supposed to have a part in there, but uh, hopefully. Uh, if they use it, they don't, but it was a little problem there, but, uh, you know, I, I still got credit for it, and, uh, you know, so I did a lot of projects, so he's been wanting to do something with me, because he, he's done uh, projects with my uh, older brother, my younger brother, and my family, so uh, I'm kind of excited about it, and then, uh, you know, I thought that was it, and then all of a sudden he asked me, he goes, hey, he goes, uh, I would like to, you know, see if your son would be interested in being in a movie. I said, my son, which one? I have an older son, and then I have my younger son. He goes, uh, you're a younger one. He's uh, 11, right? And I said, yeah. He goes, yeah, he would be perfect for the for the movie. So I was kind of excited. And, uh, you know, we went over it. And I said, yeah. I said, we're, we're game. Let's do it. And then that's when I called my son over here, Keanu, and uh, told him the good news. And he was all ecstatic about it. So he's all pumped up about it and, and ready to do it. And, uh, you know, when Ed called me up to do this show with you, uh, he told me nothing but good things about you. He said he enjoyed it. Uh, him and his son did it with you. And uh, I said, hey, I said, let's do it. I said, uh, I'm all for it. No, absolutely. And I do apologize for going on a whole wrestling rant. I know there's, hey. you know, you know, people like, I know you do like a Comic-Con conventions. People say, remember that match you had? Remember this? <laughs> And, it, and, it, and everyone else on the line, it's where it starts to roll their eyes. Or people at the table, you know, to start rolling their eyes. So I don't want this to be just a wrestling interview. But I do want to ask you some basic questions, like I do with everyone. Who influenced you to become a wrestler? And when you were in high school and college, what did you major in? Uh, well, in high school, I they wanted me to play football. But I never did. You know, because at a young age, I was raised up in wrestling business. So that was my my eyes were focused on professional wrestling. And uh, when I was 15, I actually started wrestling in professional wrestling. And uh, college wise, I was thinking about it, but I didn't. I went straight for professional wrestling. And from 15, I've been on on in professional wrestling ever since. So, uh, you know, it's it's it, like I said, it, it it's an honor. You know, uh, I could have not been wrestling i could have been out there in the street got in trouble went out there and sold drugs and 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 been in jail who knows you know only god knows that and i think wrestling saves a lot of people because it keeps you uh you know doing something you like to do and you love to do and uh keeps you off the streets you know so uh, i took it as that and i see a lot of kids that you know we trained actually my dad he had a he has a Usos Foundation. And that's what he did. He uh, actually had kids that you know were young and had nothing to do, didn't have any kind of uh, you know any kind of focus on what they wanted to do in life, and they just loved wrestling. So what he did is he went out there and he he actually started training them. And uh, once they were ready, he got them uh, you know he got them sponsored for a scholarship to go through the the training session uh, for the Walsingham Training Center. And, uh, you know, they, they're they now, they're wrestling. We have a couple of them that actually work for WWE right now. That's funny you said Manson, Pat. And then we're going to take a couple of break, and I'm going to have your son be in the driver's seat. It's time sure. for Maiden. But are you still, I mean, I'm trying to find the words for it, because I'll just sound like an oxymoron. <laughs> like I said, when I don't do my talk show, my disability shows more, so I'm kind of like, no, like a deer in the headlights. <laughs> it's all right. I, you're good. You're good to go, man. Go ahead. So do you have any contacts? You mentioned you know people in WWE, but do you still know any contacts where hypothetically you could get somebody in? Like, for an example, I want to do this until the day I die. Do you think you can sweet in the deal of Stephanie McMahon? Or do you think you are Shane? You say, oh, hey, this is kid with a disability. He he's a work in progress, but I think he has potential. Do you think that you could put a good word in for someone, or do you think it's kind of like on you're on the outskirts now, Zane? That you know, like Roman Reigns, and that's how you get backstage because you know someone who knows somebody. Well, no, I mean I can get backstage anyway because I worked for the company for years and they all know me, so that's not the problem. That's not the issue, but um. To be honest with you, um, it could be a possibility, but the, the man that would be in charge of that and would do that the most is my dad. He's very, very close with Vince McMahon himself and the family. 
And, you know, I know Stephanie, you know, Shane and all those guys. But, you know, when it comes from my dad, he's the head of our family. He would be the one to actually go to. I would go to him and say, hey, dad, I have this person, you know, and then he would make that connection. And if, if he left it up to me to do it, then, yeah, I, I wouldn't have a problem doing it. Well, if it's well, throwing it out there, I want your father on the show. For going on the record so everyone hears this, I want your father on the show. He's more than welcome to. All right, yeah, I'll talk to him, and when he has the time, let's see if we can set that up. No, absolutely. Now, we're going to take a commercial break, but we're just, forget it. We're going to jump right into it. We're going to have fun with this. You guys can ask me anything you want. Gloves off. I have no cards on my sleeve. You can ask me about my disability or how I piss people off. Some people say it's a talent, but, you know, not to blow smoke on my butt or anything. But this is your interview. I want to hear everything from you guys. So, was there any subjects you guys want to talk about? Anything you want to promote? This is your time. Well, let's uh, let's let's touch base on the the the, the uh, you know the movie uh, you know and ask my son some questions whenever you want to. Uh, he's here. He can answer them to his best ability. And uh, you know we'll we'll go on the mo uh, the movie and then uh, you know whatever you feel you want to ask, I'll answer as much as you want me to. Sure. I have yeah. no problem. And uh, you know. Don't worry about your disability. I think it's a blessing that what you're doing and you're you're able to do it and and control it by doing this. And, you know, uh, God bless you all the way, man. No, I appreciate it. So this question's for both of you. What are your roles in the movie and how do you feel about it? Go ahead. Okay. Um, so um, my role is going to be Robbie Greenfield and I'm one of... Uh, the wrestlers on, in the team, and I'm one of the main characters in it. And so I'm excited about it because I'm actually supposed to be doing a lot of stuff. So this now, is his. This is his first, uh, you know, movie or doing something like that. So it, it's all new to him, but he's he's stoked for it and ready to go. Now, does uh, Ed have, like, an actual restaurant ring for you guys to practice in or going to be in during the movie? Uh, I believe uh, he's going to uh, – he's got a gym that we're going to uh, – he's going to have for the movie. And then um, it's basically what the movie's about from uh, the script that I have. Uh, it's basically uh, have this rundown old wrestling coach and wrestled and uh, – you know, he doesn't want to do it anymore, but these bunch of kids, my son and the kids that are involved in the movie, they, you know, they come around him and they want him to coach him, uh, you know, for this amateur wrestling and, uh, you know, teach them. And it's more like, uh, you know, the Bad News Bears where, you know, everybody thought they were going to not be good and, uh, you know, they weren't worth nothing. Well, it's almost basically like that. You know, they go over there and they think, especially the part that my son's going to be playing, uh, he is actually going to be the shy type where, you know, he thinks he can't, you know, do it uh, the best like his, 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 you know, his colleagues that are uh, wrestling with him. And uh, after a while, you know, he uh, he has confidence in himself thanks to the coach. So I think the storyline is very, very good. And I, I can't wait to get it started. I know it's going to start next year, but uh, I'm, I'm ready to go. Now, the next question I was going to ask you was where's the film being filmed <laughs> where's okay that didn't make any sense where's the film based and is there different locations to it uh it's going to be based in uh, atlantic city new jersey and uh, i think some other parts will be done in pa and also uh uh in uh certain parts of new jersey yeah that's really cool yeah, they're trying to put the Jersey film set, uh, scene on the on the map again, and I think it's pretty cool because uh, years ago, let's face it, a lot of movies were made in New York and New Jersey, and then you don't see them too much no more. Everything's done in California, you know, L.A., you know, in the studios and all that. So I, I think it's great what they're doing, man. I'm, I'm excited for them, and uh, you know, I, I'm 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 100% behind them. No, absolutely, and I always mention Ed that I would love to be part of the stuff. But uh, who knows, you know, knock on wood, uh, maybe it could open a door for me. But, yeah, well, we will see. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you never give up. Like you said, you didn't give up on this. And, you know, you never know what happens. No, I agree. And for an example, if you really want to get me riled up, 
you guys were supposed to be episode 853. Long story short, I'm going to give you the quick highlights. Um, when I first started it, don't ask me why, it seemed like a good idea at the time. Like most things that I do in my life. <laughs> um, so I did 72 phone interviews. And you got people from, and not a lot of people know this, but I haven't talked about it in a while, so I'm making an inception. I got people from Power Rangers, and Amazing Spider-Man, and Dragon Ball Z, and it was just audio based, and I was still having panic attacks. I'm like, why am I having a panic attack? You know, I'm not seeing them, and you're just on the phone, and it's just making it worse. Yeah. And then someone else said to me, you have this great format. Why are you as big or bigger when you portray yourself to be? Why don't you have people helping you? Why don't you have sponsors? Great. Would you like to help me with that? No, no. If you can't do it yourself, then it's not meant to be. I hung up the phone. like, yeah, thanks a lot, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> but he said, then I came across one guy said, do your show over. Try something different. So if I'm doing audio... It's kind of like this, how you see your reflection on the screen. It's yeah. pretty much, you know, that's season one and season two. And certain people would say to me, you know, if you really want this to be taken seriously, you can't be hiding yourself. You need to put yourself out there and, you know, everything. So now season three and going forward, it's got to be cut in half. I'm on the right, you're on the left. Or in this case, I'm in a small box. And your eyes are in a full screen. Yeah. Uh, I'm still working on getting the studio part down. But I'm showing you there's a video process from doing one on one interviews to doing double interviews. I want to do triple interviews and uh, fail four way interviews. You know, just getting more people in. One reason I'm happy your son's here is because I've been thinking, I was looking at my demographics because it's kind of like from 30. To about 64. I'm like, okay, well, how can I cater to people like your son that will fit in their demographics? And I don't want my show to be like too cartoony or, yeah. or like SpongeBob or something um, because then people wouldn't take it seriously. But I'm trying uh, different ideas. And if your son has any ideas, I appreciate it. You know, I'm trying how to cater to everyone. And I know it's, you know, a hit and miss, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. Maybe I should get, like, a sock puppet or something as a sidekick and do from my voice. <laughs> but I'm showing you, you know, look at what I started from doing from 2013. Yes, I made mis mistakes. I was originally called... It was stupid on my part. I liked the, the uncensored name. So I was like, oh, you know, how... Percy's and Snickers presents WrestleMania. And I was like, oh, well, I'm paying for the Keith Angie Network. Why not say Keith Angie Network presents Uncensored? So I did that. And long story short, I came across this Power Ranger actress. I got into an argument with her. She took the name for herself, blah, blah, blah. I called her an asshole. I apologized. <laughs> she said I have a disability. I didn't mean any disrespect. And... From her or her agent says, we do not accept apologies from people like you. And wow. yeah, since then, I just wrote her off. Um, so a lot of people are backing out of the interview. And I didn't have any permission forms. So I said, forget it. I took everything down. No longer called uncensored. Even though I still have the theme of uncensored. Freedom of speech, self-expression. You get to say whatever you want. Yes. But... The show is called Keith Angie Network. So I did it ever. I got up to 300. That's like, I have a choice. And this is for your son. And for an example, if you did something you like, and you set a record, and you're like, I can stay where it is and move on to something else. Or if you're very passionate about it, you got to break on that barrier and break on through to the other side. Not sound like something from the, the doors. But I'm showing you, you can break on through to the other side. And I say, you know what? I did it once. I'm going to do it again. So I did it again. And thanks to you, we're up to 554. And it's better than the first time because now I'm doing everything professionally. 
And I'm doing everything myself, you know, promoting myself, finding people. Uh, some of my interviews are really great. Some of them are really bad, and that's on my fault because my disability comes in. But it's a learning process to say, if I can do it and I'm persistent, then you, can, you guys can do it, and there's absolutely no reason why you should have an excuse. Absolutely, and that's a great point. And uh, you're, you're, you're living uh, proof, you know, hey, Look where you're at. You said episode 500 and what? 54. 554. That's a long ways, man. You came a long ways. And uh, like, you know, the story you just said and how you started and what happened. Uh, congratulations to you, man. Uh, kudos to you, man. You, you're, you're doing a great job. No, absolutely. Now, it's the last two minutes left. I'm going to pass it over to you guys. Was there anything you want to talk about? Anything you want to promote? This is your time. You want to talk about the movie? Tell them how excited you are. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Right there. Oh, he's 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 being a little shy, but he's he's like I said, he's excited about this uh, Matt Rap movie uh, with uh, Big Ed McKeever and uh, Jason Corner, and uh, you know, I, I'm excited too. And uh, you know, if anybody uh, you know is interested, it's on my Facebook. Uh, under my name, uh, Lloyd Onowai, and also on Matt Rats, you can see the picture of my son as he's going to be one of the stars, and also you can see the picture of me on there, and uh, we're just uh, excited to, uh, you know, be a part of it, like I said earlier, and uh, me, besides uh, being a professional wrestler and uh, continue being a professional wrestler, uh, I will be in uh, Binghamton, New York, in upstate New York this weekend, doing some autograph sessions with... Uh, the legend and famous uh, uh, Terry Taylor. So uh, I'll be up there doing some, uh, you know, uh, autograph sessions and uh, some, uh, you know, uh, you know, we're gonna have uh, some. Uh, uh, we're gonna go to school over there and, uh, you know, show some uh, kind of routines and stuff like that. Old school routines that we were talking about earlier. Don't so worry. I have that effect on people. <laughs> But I didn't mean to interrupt. I do progress. No, that's okay. But, but it's funny, some men's and Comic-Con uh, um, conventions, there's two of them that are coming to New York. Are you guys going to that? Uh, one is October 27th. That's where it's on Long Island. Uh, can't remember the name, but 200 wrestlers are going to be there. And then November 10th at LaGuardia Hotel. In New York, there's another event seem to go and be there. That's WrestleCon. Yeah, I'm not sure. Sometimes they call you at the last minute, you know, and uh, I'm not scheduled for those yet, but if they call me, I'll, I'll, I'll be glad to go over there and, uh, you know, be a part of it. I know uh, I'm getting set up to hopefully in November I'll be part of the WrestleCade down in North Carolina. So I'm, I'm excited about that as well. But I, like I said, I'm just blessed to continue doing stuff, you know, and uh, still wrestling. And, uh, you know, besides wrestling, I also am in law enforcement as well. So, you know, I do that as well. And uh, I just try to keep myself busy. No, absolutely. It's always great to have a hobby. Yes, yes, absolutely. And it's always, and while on the subject, it's, if you're always looking, you know, this May, I think, or April, unless they moved it again, and there's a Hudson Valley Comic Con. And they're always looking for people, and I would love it if you guys would go. We can get lunch afterwards. Yeah, uh, let, we'll see. I can look into it, and uh, if I can get, you know, if they want to put me on there, yeah, that would be awesome. If you want, I can send you the link. Sure, sure, absolutely. That'd be great. Now, I do have a couple questions for you off the air. Uh, yep. Wrapping up, how can your fans follow you? Are you on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram? That's number one. And the second part is when I first approached, well, it sounds like an oxymoron because I didn't approach you, you approached me. So let's get the first part done, then I can rephrase the second one. Okay. Yeah, they can, uh, yeah, if you want to contact me, I am on Facebook, uh, Twitter, and uh, also Instagram. Uh, you can look me up on Facebook under my name, Lloyd Onwai, and also on Instagram and Twitter, all the same names. And, uh, same face, same picture on him. <laughs> and what about your son? Is your son on any social medias? Um, yeah, I'm on Facebook. Uh, my name is just Keanu Anawaii. And 
That's really it. I'm only on Facebook. And we just put him on Facebook for now, you know. But uh, as he gets older, he'll be able to get Instagram and all that other stuff. <laughs> now, how I usually wrap up the show is when I ask the guests, when I first approached you, how do you feel now? But you guys approached me. So with that being said, let's turn it around. When Ed first approached you with the idea of being on my show, what was your first reaction? And after being a guest on the show, how do you feel now? And do you have any regrets? Well, the first reaction when Ed told me about being on your show, I was all for it because, like I said, I'm a team player and uh, I try to help out to promote the movie and everything. And uh, he did uh, tell me uh, a little bit about you, uh, you know, with your, uh, you know, your ability and everything. And you know what? That made me even more want to do your show because, you know, what? I, I look up to people like you that can, you know, that don't give up. You know, you keep going. And, you know, no matter if you got a, a you know, it, you know, a problem or anything like that, you continue to go. And I look, you know, I, I love that. I love that in people. And uh, like I said, I congratulate you and, you know, God bless you for what you're doing. And at the end of the show right now, I feel the more grateful for doing your show and, and, and being a part of it and, and getting to know you. No, I appreciate it. Now, I do have a couple questions well, for you. Do you have a couple questions for you off the air about wrapping up your segment? It was a real honor and privilege having you as a guest, and I'm looking forward to part two down the road. Thank you for Thank having you. me. Thank you. And have I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Really. It's Vanessa Lina. I'm uh, Asian Monolo. Hi, hi, hi. This is Cynthia Bass today. I'm Sonia Fisher. This is Shane Smith. My name is Alexandra Bowie. My name is Amelia Clover. Hi. I'm Amy Linden. Hi, I'm Amelia Nicole Brown. It's Meg Green. Hi, my name is Asasa Caldwell. Hi, everybody. I'm Brooke Percy. Hi, I'm Bryn Bird. Hi, I'm Casey Dunn. Hey, it's Cassandra Kavinsky. Hi, I'm Christina Breza. I'm Cindy Hogan. I'm Courtney Sinello. Hi, I'm Daisy. My name is Deborah Jane East. Hi, my name is Danielle Marasea. Hi, everyone. I'm Victoria London. Hi, I'm Heather Crona. Hi, I'm Heather Callahan Stevens. Hi, I'm Jay Nicole Ralph. My name is Jamie Patrell. My name is Tui. My name is Julia Brunkovich. <laughs> Kathleen Wills. Kimberly Amato. Hi, my name is Laura Putnam. Hi, I'm Laura Shapanis. Hi everyone, I'm Melissa Damas. This is Michelle Mupo, a.k.a. Fusion. I'm the Anne-Marie Hi, my name is Sarah Joy Mount. Hi, I'm Susan Wender. Um, hi everyone, this is Vino Cleone. Hi, I'm Cheryl Tana. Hi, I'm Stephanie Herrera, and I was just on the Keith Andrew Network. It was tons of fun. We used up all our time and then some. I really recommend this show, and uh, try to be a guest on Keith's show. It was super fun.